In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a Super Mario style block bashing coin spawner using functions. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Hello guys, welcome back to another Easy Game Mechanics tutorial. Today I'm going to cover some basic functions. What I'm going to try and create is a scenario just like in Super Mario Brothers, where you jump up, hit a coin block from below, the coin pops out the top. We can do this in the event sheet uh, with each of these one by one, or we can create a function which will identify which block we're hitting and treat it accordingly. In the event sheet, I've just got the basic A, D and W controls for left, right and jump. All I've got on this little guy is a platform behavior with nothing special about it no code whatsoever on these blocks they're just called enemy because that's what I called them in a previous tutorial other than that if I play the game nothing happens we jump straight through them and we can't do anything so we need to put in some code to start making things happen I have created this little coin down here which I'm gonna spawn in when we hit them let's just give that a quick name coin Okay, first thing we want to do is make these blocks solid because I don't want to be able to jump through them. So we can select them, we can click on behaviors, we can add a new behavior, we can click solid. And that will now at least mean we can jump on top of them. Now we can jump up underneath them and we can jump on top of them. Perfect, but that doesn't help us spawn some coins. So let's put that in the event sheet. So we're going to add an event and we're going to say player and we're going to say on collision with another object. And we're going to select the enemy coin block and we're going to say when we collide with that we're going to add an action and we're going to say enemy coin block and we are going to spawn in another object and that object is going to be the coin on the same layer now let's show let, let's see what happens when i touch this thing now it's going to spawn it in at the image point that we selected if we jump on top of it it's also going to spawn it in and we don't want that to happen so the first thing we need to do is go into the coin block and we need to set the image point to the center that way the coin will spawn in you can see they all move there because that basically sets the position they are on the grid you can see now that it's in the middle that little white dot there which is exactly what we want now the coin's going to spawn in there when we hit it now let's get the coin here and let's add a behavior we're going to hit the tween behavior and we are going to set up a, our, our first function and it's going to be what happens when the coin um, is spawned in so we go to the event sheet we can right click we can add oh, we can add a function and we're going to call it coin movement we're going to click add action we're going to say coin and we're going to tween we're going to tween one property and that property is going to be y and the end value is going to be self dot y which is exactly where the coin's current position is and we're going to minus because we're going upwards and we're going to minus 20 and that is going to take 0.5 seconds and it's going to ease in or well, it could elastic out that could be fun let's set that up and see what elastic out looks like um, so now we're going to call that function when we hit the enemy block. Now we're going to grab the little line of code here that says an enemy spawn in that coin and we're going to pop it down here under coin movement and now we can call the function up here. There it is, coin movement. So now when we hit the enemy block we're going to call that function in and it's going to pop that coin up and tween it. There we go. And another one. But this is where the function comes into its own. You can see that when I touch one it's applying it to everything. So we need to add in a perimeter. We can go ahead and click on the coin movement function. We can right click and we can add a perimeter. And this perimeter is gonna be the block or the enemy block. In fact, let's just call it enemy because that's what the block is called. We're gonna call it enemy UID, which is the unique ID of the enemy and we're going to make it a number so now every time you can see now that this put in brackets after the coin movement it's, it's put in brackets the enemy uid perimeter that we've just added in there with the number zero because we didn't assign anything so you can see now that when we call that function we have to now put in this enemy uid and what that is going to be is going to be the unique id so you see this here the uid 7 
and this one is UID2. Every object in the game, including the player, the coin, the, the wall, this number, everything has a unique ID. These all have their own individual ones, and that's what we're going to pass through the function so we can tell the system exactly which one we're touching and which one to apply that function to. Now we can create a blank sub event, we can double click and we can specify this enemy and pick it by its unique ID and we can call enemy.uid. We can drag these two down into it and now we can change this up here to enemy.uid. So now when we call this function, the perimeter that we want to pass in is the unique ID of the specific block that we're touching. So now we can hit that one, and now we can hit that one, and now we can hit that one, and that one again. So it's only going to be relevant to the one that we want to touch in order to knock that coin out of it. Okay, so let's click on one of these um, enemy blocks. Let's add in a new behavior, add in behavior. Let's add in the sign behavior. That's going to now add it to everything, every single one. Um, we're going to add in a size movement. Um, in a sine wave and it's going to be one and one. Let's preview it There we go You can see it's pulsing in and out there. Well, I want it to be a little bit faster So if I reduce the period down to 0.5 There we go, that's a little bit better. I'm going to do the same for this one. This one is going to be sine, uh, sine wave as well 0.5 And one we'll do the same on this one size sine 0.51 so I've all got the sine wave if I click on the enemy over here in the project window we can disable that sine wave so when we play it doesn't play so they're not playing the sine wave but what I'm going to do in the event sheet in this function with the specific enemy block that we're going to be hitting so I'm going to add an action I'm going to say enemy and I'm going to set that sine wave enabled And that's the first thing that's going to happen. And then I'm going to add in a short wait, which is going to be one second. And then I am going to disable that sine wave. I'm going to change that to 0.4. There we go. So now I hit it does the block thing once. However, I need the coin to disappear. So the coin is also going to fade out on its tween. So we're going to say coin and we are going to tween one property again. We're going to tween the opacity. End value is going to be zero and it's going to take 0.2 seconds, which is what the other one took. And the default ease, the ease is going to be default. That's going to happen immediately. Oh, the first tween actually took 0.5 seconds, so let's change that 0.5 and that's going to happen immediately. So spawn the coin and then start tweening these things here. There we go. Once that's tweened and that's gone and we've disabled the sine wave, I want to destroy the coin because otherwise we're going to have a lot of different coins left and it will tween into nothing and disappear. Now the only issue we have now is when I land on top of it, it spawns in the coins as well, which we don't want. We only want to do it if we're moving upwards and we're hitting it on the bottom. Okay, so let's fix this quickly. We're going to hit B, create a sub event on this event here. Double click, we're going to say the enemy, we're going to compare its Y position. So we're going to say if the Y position of the block is less than the Y position of the player, and don't forget less than means moving up. So effectively, if the block is higher than the player, then we're going to call that function. Otherwise, we won't. Now we can hit the blocks underneath without an issue, but if we jump on top of them, we don't hit them. And that's how we use a function to make a Super Mario style block bashing coin spawning animation game mechanic thing. If you found the video useful, please consider leaving a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this.